what is up it is Maisie with barbecue by Maisie if you are new here that means you are interested in these griddles and if you are coming back I really appreciate the support all right today we are talking griddles we have got the pit boss ultimate griddle and the blackstone 28 inch griddle we are going to get nerdy we are going to dive into all the details and differences of both griddles at the very end of the video if you're interested in it i will be cooking on both i'm going to do smash burgers bacon eggs and pancakes before we get started i want you to know that i have cooked on both i originally started with a blackstone that's just what me and my husband always cooked on then the pit boss rolled out their ultimate griddles with the nonstick surface and I switched over to that. So I do have experience cooking on both and I hope that I can offer some helpful insight. Let's just dive right in and start talking about these griddles. These are both two burner griddles, similar size. The pit boss is going to cost you $599 on the pit boss website. You can pick up the Blackstone at Walmart for $381. So a little bit of a price difference there. The Pit Boss comes with a two-year warranty. The Blackstone comes with a one-year warranty. The Pit Boss has 421 square inches of cook space, and the Blackstone has 524 square inches of cook space. So the Blackstone has a little bit more cook space than the Pit Boss. Okay, now let's talk about the main difference, which is the cook surface. So the Pit Boss has a non-stick armored ceramic. There is nothing else like this on the market. I know there's a lot of hesitancy around this cooktop. I was one of them. I was skeptical uh, when Pit Boss rolled this out, but after cooking on it, I have no concerns with it. And I will talk about that more later when we start cooking on it. And then of course the Blackstone has the solid steel cooktop that you are all used to. But let's talk about pulling these right out out of the box the setup and everything like that so the blackstone was actually really easy to set up basically it comes mostly assembled the legs just flip out put in a couple screws uh, put on the shelves put on the hood and it was good to go the pit boss required a little bit more assembly but that's because it actually has more features in its structure and i did put together both with the help of my husband but the pit boss the materials is just a little bit more sturdy i think the legs and the base structure on the blackstone just seem to be a little bit more thin um so i think that's why the the pit boss took a little bit longer to put together is just because there's more to it when you do get your griddle put together the blackstone you do have to do the burn off and get the still cook surface ready to cook on so before you can use the blackstone basically what you're going to do is apply a thin coat of oil rub that around with a paper towel, let it burn for about 15 minutes at high temperature and do that over again about four to five times. So overall, that's going to take about an hour before you are able to use your griddle. The Pit Boss is ready to go out of the box. Uh, I did do a little burn off just to burn off, you know, whatever's in the factory just to kind of clean it up. So that is kind of nice. If you are a new user of a griddle and you don't want to mess with um, seasoning it, the Pit Boss is pre-seasoned, ready to go. You don't need to worry about it right out of the box. Let's talk about accessories that you can get with your griddle. Since Pit Boss has the ceramic cooktop, you can only use silicone accessories. This is the, the spatula kit. It, it, it comes with two spatulas, the scraper, and a scrubber that is safe to use on the cooktop. So that's pretty handy to have. I would suggest getting it if you do get the Pit Boss Ultimate Griddle. And then I know that they will be releasing more this fall. So Pit Boss is catching up in the area of accessories. And of course, Blackstone has a ton of accessories that you can buy and you can use the metal spatulas on the cooktop with no problem. So let's take a closer look at the Blackstone. Of course, you have got a shelf on either side and a shelf down below. Your tank is going to go right here on this side. You've got the push to start igniter. You have got the, the lid to close it up. Say, so let's check out the Pit Boss. You've got a shelf on either side. The thing I do like about the Pit Boss is they've added a couple extra accessories. They have got the trash bag holder here, the paper towel holder right there, which is super helpful when you're cooking on the griddle, and of course, a bottle opener two burners as well you've got the shelf down below the lid to close it and of course your tank goes right here on this side 
So as far as portability goes, the Blackstone, it pretty much is what it is. The thing about the Pit Boss is it was really well thought out is that you can take the entire top off and leave the base behind. So the other thing about the Pit Boss is that your shelves are going to fold down like that. So if you don't want them out, you don't have to. Um, the Blackstone, you would have to actually unscrew them to remove them. All right, and then you're just going to push this down to release the top. This part on its own is 55 pounds. So if you got guns like me, it's no problem at all. Okay, so I had posted on my Instagram that I was going to be making this video and a lot of questions came in about the grease management. And so they are different and I'm going to show you where the grease goes on both griddles. And then when I cook, you guys can see for yourselves how it manages the grease. So if you're super interested in that, make sure you wait till the end of the video to see that bacon and those smash burgers getting super greasy on these griddles. Okay, so let's talk about where the grease goes on both griddles. On the Blackstone, it goes to the back. It is right here in the middle, located in the back. So the tray just comes right off and there is a foil liner that you can put in there to make it super easy to clean. And then you just put it right back on the back. The Pit Boss is located in the front left corner. It just pulls right out and it of course has the foil liner as well. I have cooked on both quite a bit. I prefer the location of where the Pit Boss's grease goes um, because I feel like it's just out of the way. While we're talking about grease, I had a lot of questions about cleaning and I'm going to cook on these and get them super messy and then I will show you how I clean both so you can actually see that process. But just to quickly touch on it, the cleaning of these grills is so vastly different and I would say this is where the biggest difference shines through. Like I said, I've cooked a lot on the Blackstone, a lot on the, the Pit Boss Ultimate Griddle, and hands down, the cleaning on the Ultimate Griddle is way better. I can't express to you how much easier it is to keep this griddle clean. Okay, so I have both griddles turned on. I set a timer for three minutes. They're at high. At the end of three minutes, we'll just see what the surface temperature is of each cooktop. We're getting real nerdy today. Okay, it's been three minutes on high. Right here in the center, we're about 350. Upper left corner, upper right corner, lower, moving across to the lower left corner. Okay, middle of the pit boss, we are at about in the 300s, lower 300s, upper left, upper right. lower right lower left let's bring it back to the middle about in the 300s okay so another thing a lot of people were interested in is where are the hot spots on each griddle so i'm going to turn them both down to low and i'm just going to put slices of bread over it and we're just going to check it out and see uh, where our bread gets more toasty All right, let's flip this bread and we'll start seeing kind of how it looks. Let's flip the Pit Boss bread. And let's take a look at this bread. So here is what looks like from the top. So as you can see, it's hotter in the top section here. And then down here is where it is cooler. Obviously pretty hot here in the center. Let's check out the Pit Boss. So it's obviously hotter right here on the top right side and then cooler down here on the bottom and on this left side. Okay, so as far as the heat distribution goes, I would say the Blackstone overall is getting much hotter, whether that's good or bad, um, but you can just see the difference in the temperature. So I do live in Utah, so I'm not dealing with a lot of humidity, but I am dealing with a lot of harsh winters. So when you are storing your griddle, it is super helpful to have the lid. Not all black stones are going to have the lid. And so you will be dealing with a possibility of rust. Just make sure that when you're storing it, you are doing everything you possibly can to not let moisture get to your griddle top, especially on the black stone. Um, truthfully, I have left my pit boss out in the rain and I have not even worried about it. I, I just go out and make sure to dry off the griddle top. 
um, before I put the cover over it. I'm a lot less worried about the pit boss than I was with the Blackstone. Just keep that in mind with wherever you live that you do need to make sure that you have it covered in some way with more than just closing the lid. Another thing I wanted to do just real quick, because um, I know somebody is going to ask, I'm going to measure the tops real quick. So the pit boss is about 23 and a half inches long and almost 19 inches wide. The black stone is about 29 and a half inches long and about 18 and a half inches wide. And let's just see while we're at it how much space these are going to take up. If you have a certain space you want to put them in, about 50 inches on the pit boss and about 53 inches on the black stone. Okay, so I think I've pretty much covered all the nitty gritty details of each griddle. So next I am going to cook on it and then I am going to clean them both. And at the very end, I will wrap it up by telling you uh, which griddle I prefer and why. I haven't danced yet. I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of oil on the Blackstone. And I don't have these leveled out, so that will become evident. So we are going to start some bacon. Okay, let's go ahead and cook an egg while we're at it. Put down a little bit more oil. And I'm gonna cook it kind of down here in the lower part of the Blackstone. Remember up here it was super hot, down here it's a little cooler. Let's get this egg off. I left it on a little too long because I needed a plate, but there we go. Look how easy that comes off. Okay, this is a good time to look at the grease. On the Pit Boss, you, I just get a spatula and just push it right in. You see all that burnt on bacon fat? It just, it's just going to scrape right off. Okay, so let's go check on the grease over at the Blackstone. So you've got your grease right down here. Teensy bit harder to get that grease from down here up here. Now if it was more level, it would be easier. Then here's our egg. It kind of got burnt on, um, but we can clean that off. Here is our egg from the Blackstone, egg from the Pit Boss. I have just got some buttermilk pancakes here. Again, no oil or anything. You just get some of this bacon fat scraped off. See how easy that comes off? It blows my mind. So this was the side that was a little cooler. And then right here is where it was a little hotter. Let's cook a couple. These pancakes are even showing kind of how this side is a little bit cooler. These are a little darker. It's a little hotter over here, but Overall, I'll say it's a nice, even cook. All right, so we're gonna put down a little bit more oil here. All right, so I'm gonna do two up here where it was a little bit hotter, and two down here where it was a little cooler. All right, time to flip. So you can see again, cooler, a little lighter color up here. They're just a teensy bit darker. So both griddles made a super delicious breakfast gonna be diving into these soon. All right, I'm gonna plop it up here. It was hotter. Let it sit for a minute. All right, let's flip it. I want you to see the crust before I put the cheese on. It's Blackstone smash burger crust. So we're gonna put the burger up here. This is where it's the hottest on the pit boss. Let's get this one smashed. Pull you up close so you can see that crust. That is the Pit Boss. Okay, so as you can see, they both cook great smash burgers. I will admit that when I first got the Ultimate Griddle, I thought there was no way it could give a good crust on a smash burger. And as you can see, it gives just as good a crust as the Blackstone does. So I hope you found those cooks helpful. Okay, so next we are going to clean these griddles up. I've gotten them super messy on purpose. I cannot wait to get in there with a little elbow grease and get these cleaned and show you um, how they clean up. So let's do that next. 
Imagine that I forgot to turn my mic on. Well, first to clean the pit boss, we are going to take the scraper and scrape off any of the large chunks of food and just get it as cleaned up as best as we can. See how clean it already looks just from scraping it off. Now I am going to take some soapy water. I just put it in a little squeeze bottle. I have my grill on a low heat and I'm using the pit boss scrubber just to kind of scrub it off and clean it up. And then I'll just use that same scraper to get the water off the grill. Then I'm going to take a bottle of just plain water to clean off that soap, kind of squeegee it off. Once you're done rinsing, just wipe it off with a paper towel and it is good as new. I need to do some more scrubbing right here. That was about three minutes. All right, let's do the black stone next. This is a doozy. So I've got this black stone scraper. Get some water on there. You just get that gunk off. All right, so now I am just going to wipe off that excess water with paper towels. Now we're basically just going to put our oil back on. I still have it on a low heat. I'm gonna let that burn in just a little bit. Spread that around. All right, and that is ready to cook. When I'm cooking on the pit boss, I really don't worry about the mess I'm making. When I'm on the black stone, I'm a little bit more mindful and I try to clean it up as soon as possible. So when I'm done cooking, I really try and clean it up um, and, and not let the mess really sit on there. It just kind of makes it harder. So. Anyways, I would say the cleaning is by far the biggest difference um, between the two griddles, the cleaning, the maintenance, and just like storing it. I'm a lot less worried about the cooktop on the Pit Boss. Okay, so to wrap this up, these are honestly both two really great griddles. Um, it's better to have one of them than no griddle at all because I love cooking on the griddle. But which one would i choose if i were picking a griddle i would go with the pit boss and here is why there's really three main reasons um the first one and probably the most important is the cleaning it is so easy to clean that non-stick surface really truly is non-stick and so for that reason alone i am sold on the non-stick surface and I will admit that I was super skeptical before I tried it. So that's reason number one. Number two, I, I love that you can lift it off the base and just take it with you. Um, you don't need to buy a separate griddle if you're going camping or something. You, you can just easily take this one with you. And the third reason is I love where the grease trap is. It's just so much easier to manage while you are cooking. It is a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, the extra money is worth it to get that nonstick surface. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer it. If you have made it this far in the video, will you just comment pink walrus? And I just want to know who made it to the very end. You guys are the real MVPs. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. This was a fun one. We will see you next time. See ya.